So, hi there everyone. And yeah, welcome back out with CI Fishing. Cheers for tuning into this video. Really appreciate it. As always, as you always do guys, hit that like button as you come in. Make sure the notification bell is turned on. And if you like all sorts of fishing, yeah, feel free to subscribe and share the channel. Yeah, on with the fishing. So, I'm coming to a West Coast Mart this afternoon. Well, lunchtime, sorry. Currently half tied down. Uh, we've got some, yeah, decent tides. Uh, I think it's a 1.6 low. So it's not, it's not going to go mega, mega low, but we've had storms this morning. Big thunderstorm, heavy downpours. So I thought, yeah, what better way? Let's go and spend maybe a couple of hours, uh, yeah, on the rocks, chucking some lures. And hopefully, yeah, it might stir the bass on a little bit. A bit of a storm always. I find the bass are a bit more eager to hit a lure so yeah we're making our way to a mark now guys i'll give you a run through what we're going to be using lures set up this and that if you've got any comments yeah far and down below i'd love to hear from you guys see what fish you've been catching and what you've been up to fishing wise i'll always reply to your uh, comments so yeah let's get down there let's see there's a few fish around that's the plan even one maybe for the table would be nice yeah have my bass for a while maybe even a cook off let's get down there so we're on the long walk <laughs> You probably can't see it in the distance as uh, where the rod's point. there's a uh, big pole there on top of uh, a rock, big uh, flat rock. We're heading out to that way. It's quite a hike. I wouldn't recommend going out there when the uh, tide's turning uh, or coming up because you can get cut off very easily at this mark, especially on a big tide. If you're right out in the distance on the rocks, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, not a place for tide coming off, especially not on the end anyway. So I wouldn't want anyone to come out here and get cut off. But yeah, it's good fishing normally. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so, right location now, guys. Well, this is where, this is bass paradise. This is probably some of the best ground you're gonna find for bass fishing over in Guernsey. Yeah, and hopefully I'm gonna be able to show you how to catch bass uh, this afternoon. In front of us, we've got every structure you want. You got a lovely tie rip there going out. For the tie, you can have the bass in amongst the bootlace weed here. There's a big boulder in front of us there, and it drops off uh, onto a ledge. And yes, all bootlace weed through here. Normally, the bass love it. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, we got here at the right time. We can stick on a pachinko and uh, hopefully hook some beautiful basils. Let's get out there. Whew. It's definitely warm. It's still 23 degrees or 22 degrees. In uh, yeah, middle of September's crazy weather. So those storms. So hopefully, like I say those storms are going to bring in the fish. I'm going to run you through what we're going to be using today. We're just using my uh, Savage Gear SGS uh, two, 15 to 45 gram spinning rod. Uh, you, yeah, I normally use um, either my nine foot two or the seven foot. And uh, yeah, we decided to go with the uh, seven foot. Really, really lovely bit of kit. Fantastic um, long range cast, even though it's a smaller rod. Absolutely uh, epic. Love the Savage Gear uh, equipment. Uh, for the choice of um, reel, we've just gone for my uh, Pen HGO 100. Uh, it's got 24 pound braid line on there. Fantastic uh, braid. I wouldn't use anything but braid when you're lure fishing. Uh, you feel every little knock, every little twitch. With mono, it's got a little bit more give. So you don't feel, you don't get that resistance like the braid does. So I'd uh, highly recommend braid line. Expensive, but well worth it. And check this out, guys. This could be a bad sign. There's a bloody seal. Look. Get out of there. Well, we'll have to see what happens now. That might put a spanner in the works. <laughs> yeah, he'd be uh, chasing any ba uh, bass and bait fish. Yeah, brilliant. But well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm just going to start off with a chinko to start off with. We'll try and shoo this uh, seal off. Let's get out there. Let's see if there's any bass left. Mr. Seal hasn't eaten. <laughs> Right, let's see if there's any fish left in here. Sometimes the seals can um, spook the bass off, but sometimes it can work to your advantage. Let him over on. Look at that. He hasn't had all of them, guys. He hasn't had all of them first cast. Fine, on the pachinko. 
Woohoo! That came out like a rocket. Hopefully the seal doesn't come attack the um, mass on. I'm hoping anyway. God, he hit me hard. First cast. And he's right over there now. The seal anyway. He's well out of our way. Woohoo! First cast, baby. Oh, he's done well. Not a bad fish. Beautiful. He's just gone fast, chin time. Lovely job. Right, I'll get it up. Now that's something I didn't want to see. Look how heavily bleeding that bass is. I don't see how I'm going back. He's taking it right into his gills. Not a nice sight to see, but hopefully if I put him in a pool, he might recover. And hopefully we can get it back. If not, we're taking for the table he's size. I think I've got a measure in my bag, so we'll give him a measure. But I don't see it. Uh... Wow, what a start that was. First cast on the pachinko. I'll give you a show of the pachinko in a second. He just gave me a bath. I deserve that. <laughs> but yeah, check that out. Lovely, lovely bass. Probably, a, God, no, two pound maybe. But I'm going to leave him in the pool uh, just to recover for a five, ten minutes. Just see if he comes um, yeah, back around because he's bleeding really heavily. He took that lure right in the gill plates. But uh, yeah, I say, give him the best chance of living. If not, he'll come in for the table. Lovely uh, sized fish for a uh, feed. So yeah, let's get back out there and let's see if there's a few more in here before that tide goes out. Let's get back out there again. And let's see if there's any more. Because if you catch it at the right time at this farm, before the tide goes down too much, it's going to be deadly. There's so much tide run here. As I said, show you around the back. When right, the positions are like this, well, the wind behind us is absolutely brilliant. And the trinko is working really well in the tide. I love top water fishing, you can't beat it. That's why I say we put it into action, show you the mark, and it's the first cast back. Beautiful. I say it's all big pinnacles, big boulders. The bass can just sit there and have a fish there and a Any bait fishing that won't stand the chance in this heavy garden with current. It's an easy meal for the bass. So I love the seven foot rod. It's uh they get a lovely action to the lower of it. Our tide's gonna fall away pretty quick. So this bass hasn't recovered very well guys. I've had him in the pool and he's upside down. It's a shame to see, but I very rarely take a bass for the table. This one you can see there is 47 centimeters. So it's uh, yeah, well legal. 42 is the uh, minimum size over here in Guernsey. So yeah, this one's gonna come for the table. Lovely uh, stamp of fish anyway, get a nice little meal out of it. And yeah, it's nice to take one home uh, now and again. So yeah, hopefully you're not bothered by that. I can't really do, there's no point in sending him back. Not like that. Especially when you see the amount of blood that's in there. Yeah, shame to see, but yeah, we'll have a good feed out of him. So it's gonna give the Pachinko a bit of a rest now. Uh, it's gonna probably try a soft plastic or something like that. We've got far too many lures in one box. Uh, what do we go for? Might go for the Savage Gear V2. Give that a go, got a 15 gram um, Savage Gear head. Just try and, yeah, uh, I reckon it'd be sand deals in the area here. So try and uh, yeah, imitate something, well, the bait fish that you think's in the area. And that, yeah, increases your chance as well. Wouldn't go and chuck a mackerel out or something like that. Not in an area like this. Something that looks realistic to uh, what the bass will be feeding on. And hopefully, yeah, a little change up can make the big difference. Don't always stick to the same lure all the time. If you have a no lock on one lure, like that chink that bass first cast, 
and then 10 casts after nothing the fish might have gone deeper might be sat on the bottom so yeah go with that something a little bit deeper and you might find the fish again so yeah i'm really happy with uh, the little session so far anyway been here 10 minutes so yeah hopefully there's a few more in the area realistic the savage gear lads. Does it get much better than this guys? Absolutely beautiful. The sun's gone in a little bit now. So I'm gonna have a few more chocks here. Nothing that's really materialized. I've chopped and changed lures. So we might go and try another little spot on the way back through. Quite a lot of uh, ground cover around here. So yeah, at least about that one fish so far anyway. Happy days. As you can get a fish straight off and just like that, boom. They're gone. But lovely little worm, well, lovely 47 centimeter bass. So that's how that would go nicely on the uh, yeah, food table. Nothing would go to waste, that's for sure. But it's not over yeah, I'm gonna keep trotting a few little uh, marks on the way back. And hopefully we can tempt one more maybe. Or even maybe try another mark on the way, I'm not sure yeah. So yeah, let's make the most of it before the weather turns because tonight we're back in for more thunderstorms. So, but I'll be out again. I so said I got a load of uh, blow log. I went and dog her yesterday. So I'm hoping to go out of the nipper tonight. And uh, yeah, hopefully target some uh, gilthead bream, coochus bream, black bream. But yeah, you'll see that hopefully if we get some fish. So yeah, let's head over to the next little uh, section. Let's see if we can find it. So guys, we decided to come to one last little spot before finishing the session. It's on the way home, so it'd have been rude not to. Gonna have a few flicks in behind me. It's where I came on the last kayak video. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's all snaggy bouldery ground. So there's no reason why there won't be fish here. Let's see if there's one more in the area. Come on, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, fish on. Uh, Cracky long nose. Guys, that's the lure that did the damage. So if you're after him, Mr. Fish and Jersey, he's got all different sizes, collars, and you name it, he's got a these are bass magnets. Fantastic. 
So that's going to bring another episode to an end, guys. That one bass, and we came to this market and just got absolutely plagued with garfish. Every cast, they're swiping the lures. I managed to hook two, but I didn't get them on camera. I got the first one on camera, I think. But yeah, there's no bass in the area. It's uh, gone quiet. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this one, guys. If you have, hit the like button as you always do. It's really appreciated. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And like I said, I'll be bringing new stuff to the channel as well. Bait fishing and stuff like that. So yeah, stay tuned for all that. Make sure the notification bell is turned on so you don't miss a video. And yeah, we'll see you out on the sea again soon. Keep catching, keep casting. Have a great week. It's been CI Fishing Guernsey.